द रोल ऑफ उलमा लेडीज मुशेख एंड स्टूडेंट्स इन द फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल फॉर पाकिस्तान द हिस्ट्री ऑफ मुस्लिम फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इज रिप्लेट विद हीरोइक टॉल्स ऑफ डिफरेंट सेक्शन ऑफ द मुस्लिम सोसाइटी इन द सब कॉन्टिनेंट द मुस्लिम आफ्टर फेलिंग इन दियर सिंसेर इंडिवर्स टू लीव इन पीस विद द हिंदू मजोट इन इंडिया एट लाल रेड टू द फाइनल कंक्लूजन दैट दे विल नॉट बी एक्सेप्टेड बाय द हिंदू पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंडिया दे देर फॉर डिसाइडेड टू सेपरेट दैम सेल्स फ्राम द हिंदूज एंड डिमांडेड अ सेपरेट होमलैंड बाई पासिंग द फेमस लाहौर रेजोल्यूशन इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी द पैसेज ऑफ लाहौर रेजोल्यूशन गेव इमेंस इम्पिटस टू द फ्रीडम मूवमेंट The Muslims gathered under the dynamic leadership of the Qaeda Azam who gave new meanings and shape to their quest for independence. Consequently, the Muslims accomplished their desired destiny within a short period of 7 years after the passage of Lahore Resolution, which amply proves the just stand of the Muslims of the subcontinent. The amazing success of the Lahore Resolution, culminating in the shape of a separate homeland for the Muslims, greatly owes to the staunch, selfless, and dedicated efforts of all walks of life, who extended their unflinching hand, dauntless power to the Qaeda to turn their dreams into reality. In this respect, the role played by the most revered ulama and mushayikh is of. great significant they came forward with their spiritual strength to infuse nationalism in the muslim they injected fervor and enthusiasm with their preachings and fiery speeches among the scattered muslim masses and brought them in a united form on muslim league platform ulama and mushayikh The services rendered by the ulama and mushayikh for the cause of Pakistan will go in the pages of the history golden letters these venerated personalities experienced innumerable hardships in spreading the message of freedom the ulama and mushayikh with their preachings enlightened their followers and disciples in the freedom issue they had to undergo lot of difficulties in personally contacting muslims living in far areas they held meetings and convinced the people to support the muslim league the ulama and mushayikh extended their profound assistance to the qaeda azam and made his talk much easier they attended the annual meeting of the muslim league at lahore in 1940 they took active part in the proceedings of the meetings where the famous lahore resolution was passed they expressed their wholehearted support for the cause of independence the ulama after the passage of lahore resolution worked with greater zeal for the establishment of pakistan the most prominent of the venerated ulama were alama shabir ahmed usmani maulana ashraf ali thanwi maulana hamid badiani peer sayed Jamaat Ali Shah, Peer Sahib, Zakuri Sharif, and many others. The ulama and mushayikh remained with the Muslim League and the Qaeda Azam during the election campaigns in 1936 and 1946. The ulama always attended the annual meetings of the Muslim League to assure the Qaeda Azam of their sincere support for his sacred mission. They toured the whole of the subcontinent and for the Muslims of the atrocious policies adopted by the British and Hindus against the Muslims. Due to the untiring efforts of the ulama and mushayikh, the Muslims shed off their sluggish attitude to come under the banner of the Muslim League. First of all, we will discuss Alama Shabir Ahmed Usmani. Alama Shabir Ahmed Usmani. was a great theologian and sufi and he was the first of the deoband school to extend his invaluable assistance to the cause of the muslim league he extended his staunch support to the qaeda azam and sided with him again the volleys of attacks from other ulama against the qaeda azam he had his profoundest 
a belief in Kaid's honesty, integrity and political skills and acumen. He advised his men, Muslim brethren, to come under the banner of Muslim League, which was fighting for the establishment of Pakistan. Maulana Shabir Ahmad Usmani warned his fellow Muslim to beware of Hindu and Congress designs and not to be swayed by their false propaganda. He exposed a number of Muslim leaders who had come under the influence of Congress and who were misleading the Muslims. Ulama, especially Usmani, asked the Muslims to vote for the Muslim League. He declared that any Muslim who will vote for the opponent of the Muslim League would ruin the future of the entire millet and would be answerable before the Almighty on the Day of Judgment. Another main fa- factor of the Pakistan movement was Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanvi, who was an eminent scholar and a renewed mystic of the Deoband school, rendered the most dedicated services to the cause of freedom movement. In the Alama Shabir Ahmad Usmani, he became the most trusted companion of the Khaid Azam. He was widely respected all over the subcontinent for his vast religious and mystical knowledge. For most of the time, he devoted himself to impart of religious knowledge. However, he came into politics to support the Muslim League after finding the Muslims being exploited by the British and the Congress. Another main actor of the Pakistan movement and freedom struggle of for the Muslim state was Pir Sayyid Jamaat Ali Shah. P. Jamaat Ali Shah was born in a small village known as Alipur. He received religious education and learned the Holy Quran by heart. He received further education from Maulana Ulam Qadir Birbili, Maulana Fazl Hassan Sharapuri, and Mufti Muhammad Abdullah at Lahore. He entered the discipleship of Shah Fazl Rahman Ganj Muradabadi from whom he the he received mystical education. Pir Sahab had performed Hajj and was a loyal follower of the Holy Prophet based be upon him. Pir Jamaat Ali Shah rendered invaluable services to the freedom movement. He undertook strenuous traveling throughout the country to mystery sport for the Muslim League. He launched an extensive campaign in favor of Muslim League candidates during the elections of 1946. He labored hard to win support from the All India Sunni Conference for the cause of Pakistan. P. Jamaat Ali Shah was given the proud title of Amir Millat for sincerely leading Mahajah Shaheed Ganj movement. P. Sahar Manki Man- Sharif P. Sahar Manki Sharif was born in the village Manki Sharif district Peshawar. He was a valiant fighter for the cause of freedom and rendered great service to the Muslim League. He joined Muslim League in 1945 to counter Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan's anti-Muslim and anti-Pakistan activities. He organized the Muslim League in the NWFP with the help and assistance of his followers. He attended the Finnish conference held at Benares and spoke for hours in favor of Pakistan and freedom movement. He was arrested by the NWF government, but he did not budge from his early sentence. He was mainly responsible for organizing the freedom movement in the NWFP. He was the most devoted and trusted companion of the Qaeda Azam. Maulana Abdul Hamid Badiani Maulana Abdul Hamid Badiani was born in 1898. He began his career by teaching Islamic education at Badiani. His political career began when he came out to curb the influence of Sudhu movement by started by the Hindus to convert the Muslims to Hinduism. He exposed the fallacy of this movement and asked the Muslims to keep away from it. He actively took part in the Khilafat movement. Maulana Abdul Hamid firmly believed in two-nation theory and considered the Muslims as a separate nation. He severely criticized Nehru report and undertook extensive tours to mobilize public opinion against the Nehru report. 
He participated in the annual meeting of the Muslim League at Lahore in 1940 as a representative of the Mashaykh. He addressed the meeting and expressed his support for the Pakistan resolution. Maulana Abdul Hamid was a twisted and selfless worker of the Muslim League. He toured NWFP to promote the freedom movement. He also organized the freedom movement in Balochistan. He was a close associate of the Qaidiyazm and accompanied him wherever he went. Maulana Abdul Hamid's speeches were greatly instrumental in dispersing the influence of Ihrar's who had gained considerable ground. He played an important role in holding a meeting between Nizam of Dakkan and the Qaidiyazm. He was always a great source of strength and sacrifice for the Muslim League. He was able to bring a large number of Muslims under the banner of the Muslim League. The role of women in the Pakistan movement the Qaidiyazm was always very keen to see the Muslim women playing their important role in the Pakistan movement. He believed that the women should come out of their conventional confinement within the walls of the houses to struggle for their own welfare according to the Islamic principle. The Muslim women on the call of the Qaidiyazm came out of their seclusion and contributed a great deal in the freedom struggle. The venerated Muslim ladies like Miss Fatima Jinnah, Lady Abdullah Harun, Begum Maulana Muhammad Ali Johar, and Begum Rana Liaqat Ali Khan set the glorious examples of the most dedicated services in the Pakistan movement by the Muslim women. The other ladies followed them in their footsteps and rendered invaluable services to the Muslim League women wing throughout the subcontinent. The Women's participation in the politics was initiated when the Women's Committee was formed in the annual session of the All India Muslim League at Patan, Patna. The Muslim women quickly responded to Kai's call with unprecedented enthusiasm. The Muslim women, after the establishment of Women's Committee, joined the Muslim League in large number to take part in the freedom struggle. They had come in the politics with a firm determination to serve their nation. The two other organizations of the Muslim women were formed under the auspices of the Muslim League Women Subcommittee. They were the Muslim Girls Students Federation and Muslim Women's National Guard. The role of the Muslim women during the civil disobedience movement was remarkable. A large number of Muslim women faced the atrocious handling of the women workers by the government. They caught arrested and were put behind the bars. They came out with processions and raised slogans against the depressive policies of the government. Ms. Mamtaz Shah Nawaz, a brave lady, hosted the green flag on the top of the jail building where she was being locked up. It was a during act which infuriated the jail staff or beat all the Muslim women who were in jail. It was a young brave girl who unfurled the Pakistan flag at the Punjab Secretariat building and pulled on the Union Jack. The achievement of the one girl student Fatima Sugra will remain recorded in the annals of the Pakistan history in Golden Letters. She hoisted the Pakistan flag on top of Secretariat after pulling out on the Union Jack. Some prominent Muslim women of the Pakistan movement Bai Aman Bai Aman was the great mother of Ali brothers, Maulana Muhammad Ali Johar and Maulana Shaukat Ali Johar, who set the daring example of sacrifice in the politics. She impressed upon her two brave and dedicated sons to give every sacrifice for the glory and sanctity of the Khalifat. Begum Maulana Muhammad Ali Johar, she was the woman member of All India Muslim Working Committee. She was a great orator like her husband and addressed the public gatherings of the Muslim League. 
She was an active member during the historic session of the Muslim League in 1948 Lahore. She was one of the participants who supported the famous Lahore Resolution. Miss Fatima Jinnah was a, another great leader. Miss Fatima Jinnah was a close associate of her brother the Qaid Azam. She was the first lady who took interest in organizing the women's wing of the Muslim League. She presided over all meetings of the Muslim women. She was an active worker of all the Muslim women's committees of the League. She was a member of the Bombay branch of the first women subcommittee of the Muslim League. In this capacity, she rendered valuable services in creating political awareness among Muslim women and carrying the message of Muslim League in every home. Ms. Jinnah accompanied the Qaid Azam wherever he went for his political commitments. She was a highly respected personality and loved by all sections of the Muslim community. She was given the most respected title of Madre Millad, the mother of the nation. Another big actor of the Pakistan movement was Lady Nusrat Abdullah Haroon. Lady Haroon was a prominent woman of Sindh. She was a devoted worker of the Pakistan movement. She was closely associated with the Qaid Azam from whom she always received guidance. She was an active social worker and patronized a social club in Delhi established after her name and Nusrat Club. Nusrat Club soon became the center of the activities of the Muslim women where political matters were discussed. She was also associated with a number of social organizations. She was elected as the president of All India Women Muslim League in 1943. She was the vice president of All Pakistan Women's Association founded by Begum Rana Liaquat Ali Khan in 1945. Begum Jahan Ara Shah Nawaz was also a great leader. Begum Shah Ara Nawaz was the daughter of Mia Sher. Muhammad Shafi was one of the founders of the Muslim League and president of the League in 1930 and 1927. Begum Jahan Ara was one of the senior most members of the Muslim League. She was an ardent fighter for Muslim women's rights and a great advocate for their emancipation. She had the unique honor of attending the first and second roundtable conferences as the only Muslim woman member. She attended the third roundtable conference as the sole representative of women for British India. Begum Shah Nawaz took active part in a number of conferences held under the banner of Muslim League. She was an active member of the several committees of the Muslim League before the establishment of Pakistan. She was elected to the Punjab Assembly in 1937 and rose to the status of Parliamentary Secretary. In 1942, she was sent to the USA with a two-member delegation by the Qaeda. Also, she was to take part in a debate held by New York Herald Tribune on the Hindu-Muslim issue. She made an elevated impression on the American people by her impressive presentation. Begum Shah Nawaz was a vocal worker during the civil disobedience movement against the Unionist government of the Punjab. She was arrested by the Punjab government during the Pakistan movement in 1947. She was the member of the first constituent assembly of Pakistan and remained so till 1954. She was elected for the second time to the Punjab assembly in 1955 and 1961. She visited several countries to muster support for Pakistan movement. Begum Rana Liaquat Ali Khan She was the wife of Nawab Zada Liaquat Ali Khan, the General Secretary of All India Muslim League and Prime Minister of Pakistan after the creation of Pakistan. She was an active woman worker who was closely associated with him. She was extended invaluable assistance to her husband. She was held ambassadorial assignments for Pakistan in a number of countries. Begum Salma Tasaddiq Hassan 
بیگم سلما تصدیق حسین جوائنٹ مسلم لیگ ان نائنٹین تھرٹی سیون اینڈ میریٹوریسلی ورک انڈر دا ڈائنامک گائیڈنس آف دا قائد اعظم فور دا اسٹیبلشمنٹ آف پاکستان شی وا الیکٹڈ ایز ممبر آف پنجاب اسمبلی نائنٹین فورٹی سکس اینڈ ریمینڈ ایز تچ فور ٹویلو لانگ ایز شی وا دا ممبر آف دا فرسٹ پاکستان ڈیلیگیشن ٹو دا یو این ان نائنٹین فورٹی سکس شی ڈی سروسز ریئر اسٹریکن ایریاز آف بہار شی ہیلپڈ دا افیکٹڈ پیپل لانگ ود ادر وومین ورکر شو واز دا سیکٹری آف پنجاب مسلم لیگ فور نائنٹین فورٹی ٹو نائنٹین ففٹی ایٹ شو شی ٹک ایکٹیو پارٹ ان دا سول ڈس اوبیڈینس موومنٹ اگین دا چیزر منسٹری آف دا یونینس پارٹی ان دا پنجاب شی کورٹیڈ اریسٹ فور ہر ایکٹیویٹیز ان دا سول ڈس اوبیڈینس موومنٹ She had held responsible assignments in social and political organization. Bacon Salma went to on a European tour in 1951-52. She was the member of the Pakistan Parliament in delegation to China in 1957. She was appointed Deputy Minister for Labor to the Government of West Pakistan in 1958. Bacon Shasta Ikram Ullah was the daughter of Sir Hassan Suhravardi, the Vice Chancellor of Kolkata University. Begum Shasta had a distinguished career in education and politics. She was the member of the first constituent assembly of Pakistan from 1947 to 1953. She was the member of the first advisory board of education government of Pakistan from 1947 to 1956. She was the member of the Pakistan delegation to the UN in 1948. She contributed in drafting the constitution of human rights. She was the member of Pakistan delegation to the UN in 1956 and was the deputy leader of the delegation. These were the services of women who served for the Pakistan movement. The student's role in the freedom movement The role played by the Muslim students in the freedom movement is of momentous significance in the view of the invaluable services which they rendered to the cause of Pakistan. The Qaeda Alm rightly observed in calling the Muslim students as the arsenal of Muslim media. The students made available the young and energetic leadership which was most direly needed during the critical stages of the freedom movement. They were the most trusted companions of the Qaeda Azam who had great hopes in their strength, education and devotion for the noble objective of freedom. It was in fact the Muslim University of Aligarh which took lead in the student politics The students who were educated at Aligarh were very different from the students of conventional educational institutions. They developed different approach towards all walks of life. They ultimately became the harbingers of the Muslim student struggle in the freedom movement. The Aligarh students with their immaculate behavior and conduct give birth to a group of determined and selfless workers which were to work for the glory of the nation and which were to struggle for the final destiny of the Muslims of the subcontinent. Aligarh produced men like Maulana Muhammad Ali Johar, Maulana Hasrat Mohani and Maulana Zafar Ali Khan who played a key role in the reawakening of the Muslims of India. They also laid down the foundations of political journalism among the Muslims. Maulana Hasrat Mahani published his Urdu A Maula which set the example of courageous journalism in India. Maulana Muhammad Ali Johar started his comrade and Hamdarad which became very popular among the Muslims. These pro- prominent personalities however Among the early graduates of the Aligarh injected the spirit of freedom among us, the students and young people who had graduated from the Aligarh. Their thought-provoking articles tied the Muslims and awakened them from their savage behavior. The students of Aligarh had already developed a sense of Muslim nationalism. 
they were very much aware of the difficulties of the muslims in india the cruel exploitation of the muslims by the british and hindus had cultivated deep sense of belonging among us, the students of the aliga when they came out of the university they came with a sacred mission and a noble objective of ameliorating the condition of their downtrodden helpless and oppressed brethren the students of aligarh were always ready to extend assistance to the muslims in distress when dr mukhtar ahmed ansari organized a medical mission to help the turks in 1912 four students of aligarh chaudhry khaliq zaman abdur rahman sadiqi shoyb qureshi and abdur rahman peshawar joined it the aligarh students were very active during the khilafat movement and quickly responded to the call of hijrat The contributions of the Aligarh in the freedom movement are enormous as the first brick of the citadel of Pakistan was laid on the day the Aligarh movement was initiated. The students of Aligarh did not stop their endeavors even after the death of Sir Syed, an important and influential group of highly educated and enlightened Muslim students. well aware of their national identity and fully conscious of their role he made from aligarh to pay away for national freedom the muslim students other than of aligarh university towed the leg behind in responding to the national call in the freedom movement the qaidism had great love and regard for the students community and always bestowed his profoundest confidence in the young generation of the muslims the students worked day and night in mobilizing support for the muslim league they conveyed the message of freedom to every corner of the subcontinent with utmost sincerity of purpose some students living in other countries during the freedom struggle projected the cause of pakistan movement and presented a more clearer and magnified image of the muslim league they very ably performed the job of national ambassadors in molding the public opinion in the respective countries they were inhabiting at the time the muslim students worked as a personal bodyguards of the qaid azam on several occasions when attempts were made to harm the qaidism the students foiled those ignoble attempts at the personal risk of their lives during annual meeting at lahore in 1940 a school fight erupted in lahore between the kashkaskar and muslim league workers it was feared that the hawkers might try to harm the qaidism how was to preside over the historic meeting in view of the tension prevailing in the city the muslim students most of them were from islamia kolle railway road lahore escorted the qaid azam to the place of meeting the muslim students guarded the qaid day and night wherever he went he especially asked for the students of islamia kolle railway road to be his personal guards of at lahore The Muslim students always attended the meetings of the Muslim League in large number. The students from all parts of the subcontinent thronged the meeting place of the Muslim League. The Qaidians were always happy to see the students taking part in the politics and attending the Muslim League sessions. The Qaidians on many occasions remarked that the students belonged to him and he belonged to them. he advised the young student to keep on with their efforts until they accomplish their goal women of the subcontinent played an exceptionally vital role in the struggle against the british raj and the subsequent partition of the subcontinent these women belonged to an era which was far more religiously inclined than today the society was far more conservative than it is today and women were less exposed to the world as compared to the women of today even then they proved their courage and showed the world that they could rise and move heaven and earth 
in this critical time of today when the country is facing internal as well as external threats pakistan needs women to stand by their males and play their role in the progress of this country since women are a 51% of the population what they strive to do will make a difference the role of the ulama and mushaykh in the provinces during the freedom movement first of all nwfp the province of nwfp was very important because of the fact that congress had gained a strong foothold in the political phase of this province in 1927 the muslim league had demanded that constitutional reform should be introduced in the province in 1946 the congress with the assistance of the some local people and some nationalist ulama conspired to form a congress ministry in the province the congress ministry was formed in spite of the best efforts of the muslim league it was the most critical period of the freedom movement as the pro pakistan element were oppressed by the government false causes cases were initiated against freedom fighters who were put into the jails to suffer the most inhuman torture congress through its muslim members did its best to curb the freedom movement in wfp at the at this critical juncture the religious leaders ulama and mushay came forward with their spiritual strength to guide the people of wfp among these selfless leader peer sahib ahman ki sharif played the most important role he along with other ulama under the tutors of the province to quell the congress influence they were able to bring the scattered people together on the muslim league platform another and main province was the sindh the province of sindh occupies an important place in the history because islam the great religion entered the subcontinent through this province it is because of this reason the province of sindh is known as babul islam sindh is also very famous for being the land of spiritual leaders a number of mystics sufis and reformers were born in sindh or render invaluable services for the spread of islam ulama mushaykh and religious leaders of sindh made valuable contribution in promoting the freedom struggle in the province the sir hindi family of sindh the descendants of hazrat mujaddad ali fsani played important role in organizing the freedom movement in sindh their family extended all sorts of assistance to the qaid e azam in his activities for the liberation of the muslims of india Hazrat Ghulam Mujaddid Sir Hindi was a great religious scholar who extended his sincere service for the cause of freedom Sir Ghulam Mujaddid took active part in the Khilafat movement and conducted arrest along with all Ali brothers and other Khilafatist Jamaat Ali Mushaykh was set up in Sindh by Sir Ghulam Mujaddid Sir Hindi which was a great source of strength for the Muslim League in the province This great organization supported the Qaid e Azam with utmost sincerity and merged into the Sindh branch of the Muslim League. Sheikh Abdul Majid Sindhi was another highly respected personality of Sindh whose services for the cause of freedom cannot be ignored. Sheikh Abdul Majid was born in a Hindu family. He entered the fold of Islam at any age after being convinced of Islam's golden principles. After embracing Islam he became a staunch Muslim and worked for the betterment of the Muslim India. He was a prolific writer and used his journalistic qualities against the Hindus, Sindhi Vidaras, Vidaras and the British. He took active part in the Pakistan movement with dedication and devotion. Another major and great province was the Punjab. The religious leader ulama and mushaykh belonging to Punjab took active part in the freedom struggle. They prepared the people to fight the war for independence by injecting fervor among them with their speeches and preachings. The people of Punjab stirred by these speeches work day and night in spreading the message of independence to every corner of the province. A large number of holy men, spiritual leaders, priests, and saints belonging to Punjab, they came with the conquest and settled down in the province to spread the light of Islam. Quite a large number of these holy men spent their whole life in Punjab and were 
buried in Punjab soil after death. These respective personalities arose political awareness among the people side by side in the religious education. Ulama and Mushaykh of Punjab particularly took active part during election campaign in order to win support for the Muslim League. Maulana Shabir Ahmad Usmani and Maulana Zafar Ahmad Usmani toured several places in the Hall of Subcontinent to muster support for the Muslim League. The referendums in NWFP and Silhat were looked after the, by Maulana Shabir Ahmad Usmani and Maulana Zafar Ahmad Usmani. They also impressed upon the religious leaders and peace to support the Muslim League by wholeheartedly.